Welcome back as Dying Light the Beast is now available on PC platform released just today. In this video, I'll be testing it on my Windows PC that has a Ryzen 5700X CD processor and an RTX 2070 Super GPU. It's a first person open world survival horror game meant to be a DLC for Dying Light Part 2 but ended up being a standalone game. If I'm not wrong, people who had purchased Dying Light 2 Ultimate Edition before September 2024 got Dying Light the Beast for absolutely free. Yes, you heard it right. It's a shame that I did not purchase the Ultimate Edition of Dying Light 2. On Steam store, it's selling for around 60 US dollars. In India, it's priced at around Rs. 3360. Kyle Crane was the protagonist of the first game. He returns as the protagonist of the Beast. After he is turned into a sentient volatile at the hands of the mother in Dying Light the following, Crane is captured by GRE and taken prisoner by a mysterious villain called the Baron. GRE, that is Global Relief Effort, is the same organization for which Crane used to work. After being subjected to 13 years of torture and experimentation by the Baron, Crane, who now has a mix of human and zombie DNA, escapes captivity and swears revenge on the Baron while also having to fight the beast within. Sentient Volatile is basically an infected who can control itself during the daytime. This game officially supports DLSS 4, FSR 3.1 and XCSS version 2, both upscaling and frame generation. In the case of FSR, upscaler is decoupled from FSR frame gen. We can combine DLSS upscaler with FSR frame gen. Smoothing effect of in-game FSR frame generation works very nicely, but I did encounter some graphical artifacts. It made a shadow flicker during fast visual motion. Double images of a equipped weapon were produced around the left and right edges of the display whenever I move the camera around. These artifacts were not produced by XCSS frame generation. We can access the in-game XCSS frame generation setting on non-Intel GPUs by simply updating the in-game XCSS files to the latest ones, which we can obtain from XCSS SDK. XCSS frame gen also produces a slightly lower latency than FSR frame gen all thanks to XCSS low latency mode. Official FSR frame generation implementation is not compatible with NVIDIA Reflex. I have installed GeForce Game Ready Driver version 581.29. Here it is mentioned that Dying Light Peace supports ray trace effects, but I didn't find any ray tracing settings in the game. This game comes with DLSS Upscaler version 310.3.0, so don't need to override DLSS Upscaler via NVIDIA app. You can download XCSS SDK version 2.1.0 from GitHub. I'll give its link in the description. Expand the asset section, click on the dot zip link here. Just open XSS SDK archive file. Open bin folder. Copy the highlighted files. Lib XSS underscore FG dot TLL. This is XSS frame gen file. Lib XSS dot TLL. XSS super resolution file. Lib XSL dot TLL. This is XSS low latency mode file. DirectX land version of XSS upscaler not required. Copy. Select the game in your Steam library. Right click manage. Click on browse local files. Open ph underscore ft folder open work folder bin folder x64 folder replace the existing files with the latest ones paste replace yeah now you will be able to enable the in-game xcss frame generation setting even on non intel arc gpus i'll verify dlss subscalers details using dlss debug overlay we'll activate the overlay by executing this registry code provided by emos copy the lines Create a new text file anyway on your PC. Name it anything you want. I'll just name it as overlay. Change the extension from .txt to .reg. Hit enter. Yes. Select the file. Right click. Open with notepad. Paste the lines here. Click on file. Click on save. Close and run this registry file. This will activate DLSS debug overlay. If you want to disable it, replace the number 4 here with 0. Click on file. Click on save. Close and run this registry file. I'll revert the change as I want to enable DLSS debug overlay. Select the file, right click, open. Yes, OK. Enabling hardware accelerated GPU shuttling setting is not a mandatory requirement for using XCSS or FSR frame gen. But if you have an RTX GPU, it's recommended to enable this setting. Right click anyway on the desktop, click on display settings. Click on graphics, click on advanced graphics settings. Enable hardware accelerated GPU shuttling setting from here. If your monitor supports VRR, enable the setting as well. Now I'll enable VSync from NVIDIA control panel. Click on manage 3D settings. Click on program settings from this drop down bar. Select Dying Light the piece. Scroll down to the end. Enable VSync from here. 
my monitor is G-Sync compatible, I'll enable the corresponding settings for it. Click on setup G-Sync here and enable the following settings. Enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible. Enable for full screen mode and enable settings for the selected display model. G-Sync combined with in-game reflex and NVIDIA control panel V-Sync will produce the lowest possible latency and a TF-free experience in any game. I'll also enable G-Sync compatible indicator. This step is optional. Click on display here and check this setting G-Sync compatible indicator. We are ready to run the game. Game story can be played in either solo or co-op mode. I'll play it in solo mode. Options. Display mode set to windowed borderless required for using XSS frame gen full HD resolution. Vsync off. No FPS cap applied. DLSS upscaler enabled using its quality preset. Sharpness level 50 up to you. Latency reduction as you can see we have access to XCLL. Even have access to reflex. First I'll use reflex frame generation disable for the time being advanced setting i have disabled post processing effects like frame gain effect chromatic abrasion lens flare light sticks glow motion blur intensity set to nil render d3 d12 game even supports directx 11 mode d3 d12 api is required for using frame generation asynchronous compute setting on everything set to high except for post processing setting Set to low, save, jump into the campaign. Their screen, my weapons, machete, pipe, and a shovel. Journal, current objectives, investigate the town, investigate the smoke. Right now, I'm in a safe zone. That's Olivia. She helped us in escaping from Baron's bunker at the beginning of the game. Skip the sequence, not very demanding. Bench, here I can upgrade my weapons. Craft new items need to collect the resources for the items my stash just some clothes i'll enable one person clothes leave this place shovel equipped jump out the window <laughs> landed in the garbage bin it broke a fall yeah i can see the undead evening time does the attack press the space key oh my god i can literally see the brain of this infected creature it's back on its feet down for good yeah fps stays within a range of 60 to 70 few hiccups here game is not running out of vram so that's not a problem VRAM usage is close to 6.5 GB. I should have dodged that attack. My bad. Check out the DLSS debug overlay in the bottom left corner. Render preset used is K. Game's hard elements are actually blocking the DLSS debug overlay, but I can see the version of the upscaler 310.3.0. DLSS auto explorer setting is on. This setting helps in reducing the ghosting around the Objects in the environment also fixes texture shimmering effect produced by shiny objects. Okay, I'll just heal myself. That was close. Use the bandage. Now I'll enable in game FSR frame generation setting. FPS state with a range of 60 to 70 without frame gen. Set frame generation to FSR. Resume the game. Yeah, FPS increased to around 110. Can observe. The right amount of smoothness, also observing an increase in latency, nothing extreme. Games hard elements are not flickering, only DLSS debug overlay is flickering. Just disable the DLSS debug overlay after verifying the upscaler's details. Okay, I'll highlight the graphical artifacts. Just observe a character shadow, yeah, it's looking a bit blurry. When I'm sprinting, form an FSR frame generation related artifact. Now just observe the right edge of the display, the shovel. Some double images are produced around the shovel's head. See. Observe the left edge of the display. Double image can be seen around the end of the shovel when I spin the camera. So minor graphical artifacts, nothing extreme. You can definitely use the in-game FSR frame generation. Smoothing effect is very consistent. Not observing any stuttering with FSR frame gen enable. Now I'll switch to in game XCSS frame gen. Go to video settings, just set frame generation to XCSS. 
it will automatically enable XCSS low latency mode. Save. Resume the game. FPS increased to around 110. Frame pacing graph. It became thick. This is normal. Means XCSS frame gen is working. Oh my god. Yeah, game's hard elements, they are not flickering. Animation quality, it's looking much smoother compared to the game running without frame gen. XCSS frame gen's latency is lower than that of FSR frame gen. I am using my mouse to look around. Can tell the difference in latency. Oh, can't jump, will die. Just observe a character's shadow. It's not flickering when I'm sprinting. This artifact is fixed. And just observe the left and right edges of the display. Double images are not produced now around the shovel. Oh my god, this creature grabbed me from behind, scared me. It happened. Another creature attacked me. Not safe here. Okay, I'll just head for my objective. Yellow icon marked on the compass, which is displayed at the top of the screen. Need to descend safely in this place full of these undead creatures. FPS stays above 100. That's really good to see. Yeah, VRAM usage is increasing slowly. I think I made it. There's the town. No signs of stuttering. That's really good to see. Look at the undead. They are following me. I can see a car icon on the compass. Safe spot discovered. Track it. We need to kill the undead in order to unlock the safe zone. There's our objective. I'll try to scale this tower. Need to grab the ledges. Don't want to fall. Die immediately. Crouch through here. Almost there. Made it. Need to use my binoculars to identify enemies and spot opportunities. You can see VRAM usage increased to around 7.8 GB. Still the game is running smoothly, no signs of stuttering. But I'm in a big open area now. That may be the reason for the increase in VRAM usage. So good day one performance. Both XCSS and FSR frame generation work. Before ending the video, I'll just show you how to disable DLSS debug overlay. Need to edit overlay.reg file that we created earlier. Right click open with notepad. Replace the number 4 here with 0. Click on file, click on save, close and run this registry file. Yes, okay. That's it for the video guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.